Okay, so I want to put this in the framework of embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells have the potential to provide um, people with donor cells which could be used in transplantation medicine. One of the problems um, with embryonic stem cells is that they're derived from embryos and that they will be not compatible with the immune system of the donor. So the real goal would be to generate customized embryonic stem cells. And the way that was thought to be accomplished was by nuclear transfer. And indeed, it works. So in this case, one would take, let's say, a skin cell from a patient, introduce the nucleus of the skin cell into an egg from which its own nucleus was removed. Then the egg was able to reprogram the somatic nucleus to an embryonic state. And from this, we, people were able to isolate customized embryonic stem cells. And those could be then used for customized transplantation therapy. There would be no immune rejection. The problem with the approach is manifold. It is a very complex and inefficient procedure. That's one. It only has worked so far in, in, in animals, in mice. And secondly, there are a lot of ethical objections to using human embryos or human eggs for therapy and for research. So one of the goals in the field was to understand how does the egg accomplish the reprogramming of a somatic nucleus to an embryonic state. Once we know these reprogramming rules, we could do it without the egg. After all, the egg doesn't accomplish a miracle. It's a biochemical reaction. So with this in mind, people in the field, including my laboratory, have asked the question, can we understand these rules? Can we um, coax a somatic nucleus to assume an embryonic state? And what we have done was to use the knowledge coming from investigating and defining the molecular circuitry of embryonic stem cells and comparing this with to somatic cells and taking some key regulators, some key switches if you want, and express those into the somatic cells, in the skin cells, let's say. And the consequence of this is that indeed, in a sort of long process of over a few weeks, these skin cells now become embryonic cells. And when we ask the question, what is the potential of these embryonic cells? What is the molecular signature of these reprogrammed cells? They are indistinguishable from normal embryonic stem cells. So the molecular expression, expression pattern of genes is identical. The epigenetic state of these cells seem to be indistinguishable from embryonic stem cells. And most importantly, these reprogrammed cells can do anything biologically as embryonic stem cells can. They have the same developmental potency. And we tested this by introducing these cells back into embryos. They form chimeric mice, and they even can contribute to the germline. So we can generate from these fibroblasts, after this reprogramming process has been induced, we can generate mice. So by all tests we have done, it appears that these cells are, have the same potential for forming all lineages of the animal, but also for therapy, as embryonic stem cells would have. Yeah, so of course one would like to see whether this technology would be also, uh, um, would be also, could be also used to reprogram somatic cells from human individuals, from the skin of a human, for example. Now this poses a number of complex questions because the mouse experiments only really worked because we had transgenic animals, animals which were genetically modified to allow us to select for a rather rare event of reprogramming. Now we don't have transgenic humans to do that. So one would have to adapt these methods to select reprogrammed cells from donor cells which are not transgenic, which are coming from a normal human. Um, and this poses a number of, I think, challenging technological issues, which I think 
will be technical, so they will be solvable, but they have not been solved as yet, and it's difficult to, is, to estimate when they will be solved. We can try to extrapolate from the mouse experiments to humans. So in the mouse, four factors were used to initiate this reprogramming process. Now, human and mouse, although they're both mammals, um, and there are a lot of similarities. There are also very important differences. So one question would be, are the same factors which work in the mouse also work in humans? We do not know. So this needs to be explored. Um, I think there are many other issues, many other differences between mouse and humans which need to be explored. And I think at this point, um, we have to follow many different avenues, many different approaches. Reprogramming in vitro in the culture dish has been one of the key issues which many laboratories have been interested in. And we have been interested for years in this, and we generated many of the tools we now have used. But I think the breakthrough was um, um, achieved last year by a group from Japan, um, Shinya Yamanaka's group, who showed, who defined actually that these four factors could induce reprogramming. Now in their in their work, which was published last year, they did not achieve normal embryonic stem cells coming out of a um, somatic cell. What they achieved was pluripotent cells which were quite abnormal. So they could not form normal yes cells, they could not form normal chimeras, they could not contribute to the germline. They were really quite abnormal, but they showed quite convincingly that one could generate pluripotent cells. So we used these four factors with a different selection procedure, with a different experimental setup. And indeed, these four factors were sufficient to induce the process and to achieve no reprogramming to what we consider are cells which are not distinguishable from normal embryonic stem cells.